joining me on the Room Podcast is a very special amateur fighter fighting out of Lausanne's MMA. We have Andrew Valdina, 2-1, and one, ready to make his next appearance for Cage Titans, Cage Titans 50, November 6th. Andrew, brother, hasn't been too long of a time, man. I saw you last Cage Titans card where you came away with a nice, nice win, man. Congratulations on all, all the success, man. How's it going, bro? It's going good. It's going good. I just stayed on the grind like I told you in that post-win uh, uh, interview there. I'm just going to keep going, keep going, keep these things rolling, and uh, I'm going to pick up another win November 6th. And then if there's a January card or something, I'm going to go into that one and keep it, keep it rolling. Excellent, man, man. Well, as we know, the more fights you have, the more experience you have, and the closer you get to, you know, making that pro leap, bro. So you're heading into battle again. This time... You're going up in weight. You fought your last fights at Bantamweight, but now we're heading up to featherweight, man. What was uh, the reason for the change here? Um, I basically, I told, so Joe Lozon, he's the one that manages whoever fights me and stuff like that. And he just tells me, hey, we're thinking of this guy for you. Um, what do you think? And I'm literally already have yes typed in. I'm always going to say yes to anybody. It doesn't matter. And the th thing is, though, is that, you know, Cage Titans, they kind of, like, fed me, like, 1-0, 0-0, 1-0. And that was great and all, but now that I have two wins in a row, I don't think that these 1-0 guys want to keep getting fed to me here. So I'm thinking they all said no at 135. And Randy Francis, um, who I know is – actually, I didn't know him at first, but then I looked into him a little bit. And I know he's notorious for just taking any fight as well. So I was – actually happy that I got a matchup, but he wouldn't come down to 35 and he wouldn't settle for 140. So I said, fuck it. I'll just chase this kid. I'm going 45. So excellent. My man, have you ever been, uh, have you ever fought like in, uh, in the past, uh, at that heavy, I know you've only, you know, this is going to be a fourth amateur fight, but you know, uh, smokers, anything, have you been at a heavier weight or is this something brand new to you? Mm -hmm. No, I, I wrestled in college at 141. Um, so that's the closest I've got at competing at that weight. Um, besides like little off season wrestling tournaments at like 150, I didn't cut weight or anything like that. 155, but yeah, I'm I'm not cutting it off for this one. This is the first time I'm going up this high to compete at a, at a combat sport. So, well, my man, kudos to you, man. Not only are you going up out of your comfort zone and chasing a fighter because uh, you know 135, you can't get matched up, but you're you're chasing a dude with 13 amateur fights under his belt and. Randy is no uh, no slouch, man. He comes straight forward, uh, wants to work you against the cage, tie you out, take you down, and ground and pound you, man. But he's not afraid to stay in the pocket with you, man. How excited are you to get in there against someone that with that much experience? Steve, I can't wait. I'm being that <laughs> serious. I'm, I'm not joking. A lot of people just lie when they say something like that. I'm an amateur right now, and I'm literally just like, I want to keep testing myself. I want to see what I can do in that cage. And with each fight, I feel so much more comfortable, especially as the rounds go on. And I think for this one, I'm not going to have some big, you know, wait for the second round, third round to start opening up again. I think I'm just going to get feel so comfy right in the first round. And um, I think I'm you're going to look at both of us in that cage and say, shit, Baldino looks like he's had 13 fights as well. And, you know, watching your past performance, man, and even the performance before that, man, you look well-rounded in there, dude. You don't look like that was, uh, you know, your last fight, your third fight in there. And speaking to you on a personal level outside the cage, you know, I hung out a couple of times. You've actually been in this podcast room with some training partners, man. You're very, um, you, you, you know, you, your light's ahead of, uh, you know, your age as far as your fighting IQ. And that comes with the team you're training under and Joe as far as Joe you know bringing this matchup man what does he look for in a matchup is it the record is it the fight style that he thinks that could really test you in there um honestly I don't really know what he looks for I mean I I just literally tell him like Joe you know you have complete freedom to find me a matchup and all he does is just text me any matchup they get close to settling and I just say yes to it. it. So I really don't know what he looks for. I'm sure it's a mixture of like record and, and, um, and the, like their, their background and skills and stuff like that. But no, I don't really ask Joe 
you know, what specific things he's looking for or anything. I just say yes. Excellent, my man. Well, uh, a yes to a big, big fight here. And not only is it a huge, huge amateur fight, man, you guys have your own card this time around. It's a day-night doubleheader. The amateurs are starting off the day, I do believe, at noon. And uh, they're going to be the highlight of that first card, man. All amateur fights except for the main event, man. How excited are you to have like an, a whole amateur card that Cage Titans is putting on, especially for you guys? So now I'm, now I'm pretty stoked about it. I am. At first, I wasn't the most pumped to have like my own little amateur card in the beginning. I kind of like, I kind of wish I was fighting later on in the day, only because I'm losing some ticket sales for people who can't make the the, the noon card. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a fist fight. It's not about tickets, really. It's about getting in there and ex getting the experience. Um, but if if I hope they they throw me up there towards like the you know I know they got two title fights headlining the day card, but I hope them at least like the one before that or the one before that at most because. If Cage Titans was smart, they'd throw me up there that, that far because this fight is going to be a fucking banger. Hey, Cage, Cage Titans is very smart. So I'm going to see you way up there in the lineup. I'm sure of it, buddy. Uh, you know, your last fight was a banger. Uh, went the distance, man, but it was entertaining as F, man, in there, bro. Uh, right. You know, just a well, well-rounded fight in there, man. A little back and forth, a little adversity here and there. And, man, you came away with a great win, man. What did you learn from that fight that's going to bring you into this fight? Um, I, I think the one of the big – I don't think it's the number one, but it's one of the big things that I learned was in that – First, that was the first round when I head kicked Medeiros. Um, literally, that was like one of the coolest things that I've ever done. I pick him and see someone just have those like giraffe legs right there and get all wobbled and stuff. I freaking loved it. But I, what I learned from that is finish that freaking fight right right away. Don't let that drag out into the second and ended up being a freaking decision. That was such an amateur mistake I made of maybe not taking him down, but taking him down and then just getting off him and then throwing a couple little ground and pound after that. I can tell you right now, you know, when I head kick this kid, I'm I'm gonna finish him. I'm not gonna wait and let it go to the decision. Or if I do take him down, I'll I'll do some groundwork with him too. But I'm comfortable. Excellent, man. Well, you've seen. Well, earlier you spoke that you didn't know much about Randy, but you looked him up, man. What do you see in his game that uh, excites you as far as this fight, man? Because this could be, I mean, this could be one of the the fights of the night as far as the amateurs, man. Especially with. Randy, his background, I think he has a couple of titles as an amateur. He's always in a firefight. He's coming off a loss, so he's going to be in there and very hungry to get his hand raised in there, man. What do you see out of this kid that fires you up? And is uh, is there anything you're looking forward from him that could kind of highlight your, you know, your arsenal? You know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't going to get hit a couple times in this fight. I think he's the type to really just come forward and just start throwing and throwing. Kind of almost like a wild man sometimes, but he lands here and there, so, um, and he puts you up against the cage. But what I've learned about me, I think every fighter kind of learns something about themselves with each fight or, or anything like that. But I've learned that the more I get hit, you know, the more into this fight I get into. And, you know, the more wild I become in like savage mode. And, you know, if he hits me, you better be ready for a couple uh, knocks back, I'm telling you. So I'm excited for him to bring it to me. Just as much, he better be looking forward to me bringing it to him too. Well, one thing about, uh, you know, the fight, I know you're moving up. Uh, because, you know, hard to get a fight, and he was game for it. You know, that uh, that featherweight title, I do believe, is open now, and Randy was kind of a title contention, kind of his last fight, I do believe, to, uh, you know, maybe fight, challenge for that belt. But now it's an open belt, and, you know, Randy's looking, I would say he's looking to either go pro or grab a belt before he goes pro, so this is an important fight. Is this something that you might see yourself uh you know, might maybe get another fight at 145 and maybe chasing the belt, or is this kind of a one and done deal and and you're more comfortable at the bantamweight level? Like, well, I know this fight's at 45; it's not at 35. Yeah. But in an ideal world, what I'd like to do is, you know, beat first fights first. Um, I'm taking this very serious. I don't want to look too far ahead, but I definitely want to get through Randy Francis, beat him, and then after that. I want to go down to 35 and fight for that belt. That's the belt I want. That's the fight that I had all my fights at. Well, besides the Bagley, we'll catch at 130. But um, that's where I feel more at home. I feel like a, like a, that's a good cut for me right there at 35. I want that belt. I mean, 
if we can do something crazy, you know, maybe I could come back up and get the 45 one too. But um, no, 35 is the one I definitely want. Definitely want. I'm not even, if 45 is where I have to go, if no 35 is going to take a fight, then yeah, I guess so. But um, 35, please. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nice to have options there, my man. Andrew, how old are you, by the way? I'm 24. Dude, you're, I mean, you're still growing as a fighter. You're an amateur, man. You, I mean, you know, packing on my... You, you guys are always ask, on adding arsenals to your tools as you grow. I mean, you're going to grow. Who knows what weight you're going to be at next year and your level of performance, man. So the sky's the limit for you right now. You're fighting with Lozon. You're, you're, you're mixing it up with uh, UFC caliber fighters, UFC fighters, potential champions coming up uh, from Lozon's. You never know with you, man. As far as, you know, who's going to be... You got a bunch of fighters on the day and night card, man. How are you managing? Who's going to be in your corner? Now, my corners is going to be Joe Lozon. He's been with me every time. Um, Connor Matthews, even though he's fighting at night, I already asked him, and he said he's perfectly fine with coming in and cornering me for this fight. And then um, definitely don't miss that fight, by the way, everybody. Seriously, yeah. that's going to be a freaking banger, too. Um, and usually I have my uh, head wrestling coach from college, Frank Camisa, corner me. Um, but they have a meet that day, and I'm missing friggin' the whole Bridgewater te uh, wrestling team's roster for tickets out of that too. It sucks. But um, now Frank will be able to corner me, so I gotta I gotta find a third. I have a couple people in mind, but I haven't really asked them yet. Dude, yeah. uh, a few weeks late uh, uh, left, man. You got tickets to sell. The fights were just started. I know, I know you're a, a, a big sale and uh, got a big support. So shout out everything, man, and, uh, you know, social media, tickets, any way we get in touch with you because there's a few weeks leading up to this fight and uh, people are going to be have their eyes all over you, man. Yeah, you give me the platform to start shouting things out. Yeah, over. throw it all out there, man. Throw it all, all right. out. So Instagram, just my full name, Andrew Valdina. Definitely shoot that a follow. I'll throw some decent content, some cringy stuff too, but it's pretty pretty good. And then – um. For my sponsors, I like to shut my sponsors out, but here's the thing, Steve. I got to swipe out and go to my sponsors. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So here's my sponsors. I got uh, Kayla Frazier, graphic design. Um, she's actually a very, very good friend of mine. She does great graphic design work. She went to school for it. She got a degree in it. Um, go to my Instagram and click my link tree, and she's the second link. So just click that. You can um, go right to her page and um, – Hit her up for any graphic design needs. She's really, really talented. You'll see that right when you click. Um, Invisaware is the next sponsor. I'm actually really grateful for them. It's a pretty big company. Um, basically, in a nutshell, what they um, sell is um, jewelry and accessories that have like a, it's like a hidden um, emergency service button. So if you get in like an accident, you can click that and an emergency service will come right away. Um, Christmas time is coming up, so that's going to be a great gift to you know, get your family members um stupid genius studios um uh, that's the next sponsor they have uh fire fire music it consists of um i think mainly ck major um low rich and Chaz. uh low rich actually just came out with an album not too long ago check him out too um enigma jiu-jitsu actually that's that's owned and operated by uh christos papa pa, 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 whatever his papa del is. papa delos <laughs> Papadellos, I'm sorry, Christos. <laughs> but uh, no, that's a that's a hardworking dude right there. He's only like 20 or 21, and he's already running his own organizations and stuff like that. So props to him, and you know I appreciate him on the sponsor me too. He's actually fighting November 6 as well. Yes, he is, man. I'll be talking to him. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. I he I see him in the gym too. He's he's very talented. Not even not just on the ground either. He's got good stand up. Excellent. Uh -huh. Greyhound Tavern. They've been very loyal to me every single fight. It's a nice little bar in Bridgewater. Um, definitely check it out. The owner's a you know, top-of-notch guy. Gothier Millwork, um, another hard-working dude from the town. I'm from Dracut, Mass. Um, he basically runs all the car carpentry in Dracut. Um, really, really talented dude. Check out his Facebook page. There's also the link tree in my, in my bio, my Instagram. Um, McNeil Landscaping. He's uh, actually wrestled with him in high school. Another hard, hard, hard. All these people are hard working. I'm telling you right now. I don't have any slouches. Um, that, he does, uh, you know, fall season's coming. Get those leaves out. Call him up. Kevin Lawrence, plumbing and heating. 
Um, I don't know too much about the the actual owner, but I know Justin Simmons, who you might know. Yes, I I know him. He follows me, and uh, yeah, he he likes a lot of my stuff. So I love that kid. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's an awesome dude. But hey, I'm sorry for my language, everybody. But fuck that guy. He's gonna he's gonna laugh about that. Um, now I check him out too. U.S. Golden Pawn. That's run by my uh, oldest sister and her boyfriend. Um, at, it's in Manchester, New Hampshire. They get great deals. Um, and finally, Into Action Recovery. It's a uh, seven-step program for uh, overdoses. So check them out, too. It's run by my family and uh, Tuxbury Mass. And that is all. Thank you for giving me that platform. No no worries, my man. Awesome, brother. You, you're 24. This is your fourth friggin' amateur fight. You got 7,000 fucking sponsors, man. Awesome, brother, man. Awesome, man. That means you're doing the work and you have a big support group behind you because, man, you're something to see and you're going to be something special in the future, brother, man. So last question. What do we expect to see from Andrew Valdina on November 6th at Fireworks. Cage Titans 50? What do we expect to see, man? Fireworks. I'm telling you right now. No, no joke. All joking aside, it's... uh. It's going to be a banger. I know I'm going to get hit. He's going to get hit hard. Um, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's from a cocky standpoint. I'm saying it's from a confidence same standpoint. Um, and just truly, I've never really made predictions for my fights, but I really do think I'm going to knock him out in the second round. Dead serious. Well, I'll hit the bookies uh, right after we get off the phone here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a fool out. I'll make my own books. <laughs> so with that, Andrew, man, a pleasure always talking to you, man. Uh, we got to get the crew back down here live uh, on a live podcast. Uh, the whole crew in here and bust balls, man. We'll do it after the card because it's going to be a bunch of you uh, in a happy state after November 6th, man. So all the power to you, brother. Lozans are doing it. New England is on the map, and you guys are a huge, huge part of it. So, Andrew, we'll see you November 6th, man, for that fourth appearance, man. So, good luck, man. Have a great training camp, and we'll see you in about three and a half weeks, man. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, man.